One, two, three, four. Let's cause an uproar. Hey, I'm Leo, and I'm causing an uproar about lions. Lions are amazing creatures. Why, you ask? Well, they have razor-sharp retractable claws, long dagger-like teeth, and a fierce roar. They like to hang with their pride. By spending so much time together, they form really strong bonds. A pride can include 40 or more of their feline friends. Now that's a party! Lions spend about 20 hours of their day sleeping and lounging. But what they're really doing is storing energy for their next hunt. Their natural instinct is to kill. They are powerful predators. Believe it or not, even baby cubs are born with a killer instinct. And they're also super cute. Yup, I said it. Just look at the cuteness. Cubs love to play, and they can often be found mimicking their parents by running, crouching, and pouncing on their siblings. Some photographers are even experimenting with new technologies to watch how these playful cubs develop into prowling beasts. So even though I'm not a biologist or a zoologist or an anythingologist yet, I wanted to do something to help the king of beasts. You see, lions are actually in trouble. They're disappearing from the planet, driven out of their habitats by hunters, poachers, and humans encroaching on their land. Over the past 100 years, lion populations have shrunk from hundreds of thousands to only about 35,000. But people are making a difference in helping to save lions by building fences to protect livestock and educating communities. And you can do the same by helping spread the word, too. I realized that I could help the lions by doing exactly what I love to do most, make stuff. Unfortunately, I don't get to see real live lions every day, so I draw, paint, and sculpt lion art to remind people about them. What's cool is that I've learned that there are a lot of people out there who care about lions too. There are so many things you can do to help raise awareness and save the lions. Look for lions in logos, movies, books, songs, and even sports team names. You can write a letter to the company and suggest that they make a donation to help save the lions. Make your own version of Capture the Flag and protect your territory. Patrol your borders just like a lion. Now it's your turn. How are you going to cause an uproar? What's next on my list? Make a picture of a lion that can be seen from space. No, really. I'm not lying about that. Hello out there! It's me, Leo, howling at my wolf buddies. Oh, and at my people friends too. Wanna know what I'm howling about? How cool wolves are and what we can do to save them. From nose to tail, wolves can be as tall as a basketball player. They're the largest wild canines in the world. That's right, I said canine, as in dog. You know those super fluffy dogs with bows in their hair? Well, they're all a part of the same family. And just like a family, wolves hang around in packs. They communicate with each other by howling. Sometimes their howls can mean, hey, what's up? But other times they're saying, back off. Each member of a wolf pack helps take care of each other. They eat, sleep, hunt, and defend their territory together. They're together 24-7. If I had to spend that much time with my sister, yeesh. In a pack, each wolf has a role in the family. The parents are the leaders, followed by mid-ranking adult wolves. Rank isn't about a wolf's size, but its personality. The largest wolf in the pack could end up at the bottom if he's too quiet, the class clown, or an obedient follower. This order determines who breeds, who eats first, who sleeps where, and who babysits the pups. Did you know that when wolves are born, the pups are the same size and weight of a can of soda? I wonder if they come in a six pack. You can usually spot a wolf den by the pup's chew toys. 
like bones and sticks scattered all over the place and covered in tiny bite marks. Wolves have lived on almost every continent on our planet for hundreds of thousands of years. But even though wolves are fierce creatures, some are in danger of going extinct. Throughout history, wolves have been poisoned, trapped, and shot to clear land for agriculture and housing. Until the 1970s, wolves were on a path to being entirely wiped out in the United States, Europe, and Asia. But the good news is that, thanks to people like us, people shouting from the rooftops about how important wolves are to our ecosystems, wolf populations are making a comeback. I made these cool wolf masks out of paper mache. Hey, I think I have enough for my whole pack. Next time we hang out, we're going to try eating like wolves. Well, not raw meat, but my parents will grill something and then we'll eat it with our bare hands and tear into it with our teeth. We'll really wolf it down. Okay. You know what else would be so fun? We could make a den for the whole pack. All we'd need are some branches, cardboard boxes, and sheets. The only rule will be no chewing on the furniture. Now it's your turn to howl. What are you going to do? Hey dad, where are my slippers? Ah, here they are. You know, polar bears don't have any problem keeping warm like we do. They're equipped with fur and layers of fat so they can swim and hunt in icy cold arctic waters. They can even stay underwater for as long as two minutes and have been known to swim for 200 miles in a single stretch. One female polar bear was tracked swimming for nine days straight. She deserves a medal. Sometimes you can see polar bears going for a ride on the ice. As they float along, they can smell their prey, seals, that are swimming beneath. It's funny because we think of polar bears as being white, but their fur is actually transparent. How cool is that? They totally blend into their surroundings. Oh, and did you know that polar bears have belly buttons? I wonder if they get lint trapped in there too. But because of global warming, more and more of the Arctic ice is starting to melt, and polar bears may disappear along with it. Right now, there are about 25,000 polar bears living in the Arctic region. Researchers predict that in 50 years, two-thirds of them will be gone. Not just because of global warming, but also because of oil drilling, pollution, and hunting. Polar bears are actually considered marine mammals, like seals and whales, because they are dependent on the sea for their food. They're a crucial part of the Arctic ecosystem. The health of their population indicates the health of the entire ecosystem, good or bad. Many of the 21,000 species who live in the Arctic would be affected by the loss of the polar bear. But the good news is that we can do things, like right this minute, that will help save the polar bears in a very real way. You don't even need to leave your house to do it. Saving energy and protecting the environment can help slow down and maybe even stop global warming. My friends and I started a club called the Screamin' Greenies, where we share ideas, do community projects, and take a pledge to do whatever we can to help save the planet and the polar bears. Last week, we made a polar bear cookbook to sell. All of the money we raise will go towards a foundation that's helping to save the polar bears. No, we aren't cooking polar bears. We're even eating like polar bears. Walrus pizza and Norwal fries, anyone? <laughs> It's all about choosing healthy foods that are locally grown, minimally processed, and don't require a lot of energy to cook. Now, I have to admit that I'm not much of a cook, but I do love to draw. I call this one, Polar Bear in a Snowstorm. <laughs> I know, I know, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> Today, my friends and I are making noise about elephants. Okay. No way. I'd love to see that. Do you have a video? This is my friend Allie. She was just telling me that elephants use their trunks for all kinds of things. 
as you can tell by her, um, trunk, Allie is a huge fan of elephants. And who can blame her? Elephants can smell water from miles away. They can tell if an animal is a friend or an enemy, and even make tools, all using their trunks. An elephant's trunk can be used as a snorkel in deep water, and it can even hold two gallons of liquid. Two gallons! Baby elephants have to learn to use their trunks. At first, it's more like a floppy garden hose than a useful limb. Speaking of baby elephants, they're super adorable! And don't even get me started on their ears. Elephants' ears have a unique pattern of veins, just like fingerprints, no two are alike. African elephant ears can be six feet tall. Now that's a huge fingerprint. Ears are also one of the ways to tell the difference between the two species of elephants, African and Asian. Asian elephants have smoother skin and smaller ears than African elephants. Also, very few Asian elephants have tusks. They use these extra long incisor teeth to peel bark from trees, dig up roots to get water, and to defend themselves against enemies. Combined, the two tusks can weigh over 200 pounds. Unfortunately, they're the main reason why African elephants are in danger. Elephant tusks are made of ivory, which is prized by some cultures. It's carved into statues, made into jewelry, and crushed into powder. Poaching, the illegal hunting and killing of animals, is the biggest danger to elephants. Poachers kill these amazing animals just to take their tusks. It's too awful to even think about. Just over a hundred years ago, millions of elephants roamed across Africa and Asia. Today, only half a million remain on the entire planet. If nothing is done to stop the poachers, elephants will disappear. But we aren't going to let that happen, are we? We're going to trumpet as loud as a herd of elephants to spread the word about what we can all do to help. Allie, how about adding some huge floppy ears to that costume? <laughs> no way that won't get people's attention. Whoa, Dylan got over 300 signatures on her petition to make selling ivory illegal. And she has a meeting with her state representative to deliver it. Go Dylan! Wow, now I'm totally inspired to do something to help. I feel a poem coming on. Hmm, what rhymes with wrinkles?